morning. Speak to us in Jesus' almighty and all-powerful name. Everyone says, Amen. Hallelujah. Judges chapter 13 and verse 1, and it says, And again, the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines for 40 years. And now there was a certain man from Zorah of the family of the Danites, whose name was Manoah. And his wife was barren and had no children. And the angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, Indeed, now you are barren and have borne no children, but you shall conceive and bear a son. Now, therefore, please be careful not to drink wine or similar drinks and not to eat anything unclean. And behold, you shall conceive and bear a son and no razors shall come upon his head for the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb. And he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. Judges chapter 16 just two scriptures, verses 28 to 30. It says, Then Samson called to the Lord, saying, O Lord God, remember me, I pray. Strengthen me, I pray. Just this once, O God, that I may with one blow take vengeance over the Philistines for my two eyes. And Samson took hold of the two pillars which supported the temple and embraced himself against them, one on the right and one and the other on his left. Then Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. And he pushed with all his might and the temple fell on the lords and all the people who were there. So the dead that he killed at his death was more than he killed in his life. This morning, I'd like to speak to you on a sermon that is entitled, The Challenge in the Middle. The Challenge in the Middle. Last week, we spoke about don't stop halfway or winners don't stop halfway. Amen. And I was thinking about what, so this is really a, a continuation of that sermon. Well, it's actually a sermon. We're taking one step backward compared to where we were last week. Because last week, we, we really ended strong. We said, you know what? We made a statement. We said, it's, it's not how you start, but how you finish. But how many of you know, if we want to end strong, if we want to finish strong, then we've got to learn how to manage the mess in the middle. Uh, we, we got to learn how to manage the challenges that comes in the middle of life. And one of the reasons many times that we don't finish something is because or you don't finish a task or you don't finish a project is because distractions set in, uh, challenges set in, things come your way and, and we get distracted and we allow the challenges, uh, man, to, to knock us down and, and then we, we don't finish strong. And, and so this morning we're going to really do, last week we looked at the the journey of Elisha, and so this week we're going to look at the life of Samson. So we're going to do a quick case study on the life of Samson. Because the Bible tells us and shows us in Judges chapter 13, the word of God shows us that Samson had a very strong start to life. Uh, we're gonna, we'll go into it a little bit more now, but he had a very strong start to life. The Bible says right there at the beginning of his life, before he's even born, that an angel appears to his mother and then later also to his father to confirm that his mother who was barren would conceive a son and that the son was destined for great things. So God, and that God would use him as a deliverer of his people. So Samson had... He had a good start. He had a strong start. And then we see in Judges chapter 16, you don't need to put it on the screen right now, but we see that Samson also finished life strong. It says in verse 30, it says, So the dead that he killed in his death was more than he had killed in his life. So he, he started strong, 
and he finished strong. But if it was not for the grace of God, Samson's end could have been disastrous. Why? Because of the mess and the problems in the middle of his life. And so I realize that if we're going to finish strong in life, we've got to overcome the challenges in the middle. Hallelujah. And so I want to give you a few quick examples. Can I just remind you of what we spoke about last week? We started off with the story of Tira. Tira we know was Abram's father. The Bible says that God gave him a commission. God spoke to him. I believe in Jesus' name. And God told him, I want you to take your children, your family out of the, of the Chaldeans. And I want you to go to the promised land. And we know the story. We read it. Um, that when he got halfway, when he got to Iran, amen, he stopped. And he didn't continue. So where did the challenge came? The challenge came when he came halfway. Hallelujah. And so can I say it again this morning? Uh, we got to, you've got to understand that life's challenges many times it happens in the middle. If you don't believe me and you don't believe Tira, then maybe you'll believe Jesus and his disciples. One day Jesus, he tells his disciples, he says, he gives them a word. He says, we are going over to the other side. He says, we're going over. Ah, uh, man, he, he didn't say we're going under. He prophesies, he says, man, we're going over to the other side. He was so confident that when he, the Bible says when he got into the boat, he went down into the stern, he grabbed the pillow, he put his head down, and he went to sleep. And, and so as they launched out to go to the other side, the word of God tells us that when they came to the middle of the Sea of Galilee, there a storm came up. In the middle, the storm came up and the Bible says that the disciples, man, they freaked out. They, 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 they began to cry out in panic because they, they thought, listen, it's over. Now, now you must understand if Peter and Andrew started panicking, the rest of them was probably quickly started panicking, panicking because Peter man, and Andrew, they, they, they were commercial fishermen. They grew up around the Sea of Galilee. They, they, they knew the, the sea well. And when they got to the middle and that storm came, <laughs> and Peter said, I was with this. No way we're going to make it. Can you imagine what Dr. Luke said? Yeah, <laughs> man, I, I don't know anything about the ocean. I don't know anything about the sea. But if Peter's panicking, then we're going to die. Lord, help us. But it happened right there in the middle. And, and, and it's interesting that when they, when they went to Jesus, they go to him and they say, they, say they, they wake him up and they say, Rabbi, they say, Rabbi, man, we, we're going to die. And, and, and Jesus, I love this, Jesus does, he, he doesn't just get up and go and calm the storm. No, he first addresses the fear and the storm on the inside of them. So he looks and he says, but why are you of, of such little faith? In other words, did I not give you a word? Man, I spoke a word and I said, we're going over to the other side. I didn't say we're going under. I declared that we're going over. I made this statement once. You know what? The children, what, what the disciples should have done was they should have grabbed the pillow. And they should have put it down next to Jesus and put their arm around him and said, Ah, let's sleep. Because if this storm does not bother you, the storm does not need to bother me in Jesus' name. Ah, uh, yes, it came in the middle of our journey. Ah, uh, uh, but with Jesus in the boat, uh, I can smile at the storm. Uh, I'm here to encourage someone this morning. Uh, the mess, the problems of life, it usually, the distractions comes uh, in the middle. Uh, but I'm here to encourage you that God is with you in the middle of the storm. Amen. Uh, in the middle of the chaos, uh, God is on your side. Uh, I love the scripture. 
It's one that you know, but the word of God promises us that he will never leave us nor forsake us. There's not a moment in life that God is not on your side. There's not a moment in life that God will forsake you, that God will walk away from you. Doesn't matter how difficult life is. Doesn't matter what the enemy throws at you. It doesn't matter how strong the storm is. God is on your side hallelujah and when the challenge comes in the middle of life uh, he says I won't leave you uh, I know you started strong uh, but you will finish strong in Jesus name hallelujah 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 and so they made it over to the other side they made it over because I know as far as Jesus was concerned, the matter was settled. As far as Jesus was concerned, the word has been spoken. But we find in the story really that the enemy challenged the word. And Pastor, Pastor Shaman usually speaks on this um, very well. He teaches on this, but and I want to encourage you this morning. We've got to understand something. The word the seed that has been released in your life, even the prophetic seed and prophetic words that has been released over your life will be tested. The Bible says unless a seed dies, it will never give birth. And so the enemy will test the word of God in your life. The enemy will test your commitment. The enemy will test your sacrifice. And how does he do it? He, do it, he does it by releasing challenge, challenges right in the middle of your walk. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't believe me and you don't believe the disciples. Maybe you'll believe Nehemiah. Uh, Nehemiah was one of the greatest leaders in Israel's history. And so the Bible tells us in the book of Nehemiah. That he was a cupbearer to the king of Persia. And one day there was men that was, they were tradesmen or they were selling things. And they came from Jerusalem. And they ended up in the city where Nehemiah was. And so he goes and he speaks to them. And he, he asked them, he says, listen, uh, what's happening in Jerusalem? What's happened to the people? that was still left in Jerusalem because there was this remnant that wasn't taken captive. And so they were still in Jerusalem. And he asked them, he says, are they okay? And the report wasn't good because the gentleman said, he says, listen, man, they're not okay. Uh, the city is still run down. The walls are still, man, it's still down. It's, in other words, man, the, the enemy has got free access into the city. The enemy comes and goes like they want to. Our people are not safe. Our children are not safe because the walls are still laying down. The walls are still in ruin. And so God places a, 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 a burden, a concern on Nehemiah. And many times... When God is getting ready, this is just for free this morning. But when God is ready to birth a vision within you, he'll begin to burden you. When he begins to place a vision within you, he, he, he'll place a concern upon you. For Elizabeth Hawk, it's ladies in the community. And so God will burden Nadine with that she can't sleep at night she's there's a concern on the inside of her all she does is talk about how can we get this woman off the street uh, how can we get them out of an ab abusive situation uh, how can we get them into a safe house uh, and so God will place a concern a burden on the inside of you and then from that concern and from that burden God will release a vision within you it always starts like that 
And so God places this concern on, on Nehemiah. And so he immediately begins to fast and pray. The word of God says for three days. And he prays and he fasts for favor. He says, God, I'm, I'm, man, I'm, I'm burdened by this. I can't sleep at night. How can Jerusalem still be in ruin? So he goes to the king and he, and he says, king, the king actually asks him, he says, listen, are you okay? Because you look down. And he says, king, I, I got a concern. The walls of Jerusalem are still demolished. Please, can I go? And we'll preach on this one day. Uh, can I go and can I rebuild the walls? And the Bible says that God gives him favor with the king. And the king says, listen, I want you, you can go, but, but you're not going empty-handed. Hallelujah. Man, you, whatever you need to rebuild the walls, take everything with you. You got my blessing. He even gave him his ring. He says, listen, you go to the guys in the forest that are cutting down the trees. Get as much lumber as what you need. Just show them my ring, man, because I'm going to favor you in this, in Jesus' name. And God favored them. He ended up going to Jerusalem. When he got to Jerusalem, he got all the people together. And so he, he shared his vision with them. And the people got excited. And the Bible says that immediately they started building. They didn't wait. They said, no, we're in this. In Jesus' name, we are going to rebuild these walls. We're going to rebuild these walls. But, but I want you to see this. Can you put it on the screen for me? Nehemiah chapter 4 and verse 6 to 9. Let, let's just see this. It says, so they built the walls. I don't want to be wild this morning. I want to teach in Jesus' name. And so they built the walls, and the entire wall was joined together up until what? Which height? Up until half its height. For the people had a mind to work. Look at what happens. Verse 7. Now it happened when Sam, Ballot, Tobias, the Arab, the, Arab, the, Am the Am Ammonite, and the Ashadites heard that the walls of Jerusalem, these are the enemies of, of the children of Israel at the time, was being restored and the gaps were being closed that they became angry. The walls was built halfway. When they started building the walls, the enemy just laughed. Because how many of you know the enemy knows the stats? We spoke about it last week. And what is the stats? There's not many people that finish. Uh, there's a lot of people that start things, but they don't finish things. And so when they started building, the enemy left them alone. The enemy must have thought, you know what? Uh, it's okay. There was others that tried to rebuild the walls, but the project was too big for them. And they just gave up in the middle of the mess. They gave up because it was just too hard for them. You need to understand something. The enemy is not worried when you start to pray. Uh, he's not worried when you start a prayer life. Uh, he gets worried when you consistently pray. When you don't give up. That is when he begins to get worried because he's like, hey, 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 hey. I thought this person would just start and stop. But uh, there, there's no stopping in me in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, uh, there's that, that saying, that acronym with prayer, it says push. Uh, uh, you got to pray until something happens. Uh, hallelujah. You got to push in the spirit. Uh, you got to push in Jesus' name. Uh, uh, the devil is not afraid when you start coming to pray on a Monday. Uh, the devil becomes worried uh, when it's months later. Uh, a year later and you still faithful to pray you still faithful to seek the face of God that is when uh, the enemy gets your when he gets when he gets when he be, when he begins to watch out for you devil's not worried when you begin to give because the stat is against you soon as something bad happens in your home I, I'd rather keep my tithe 
God knows I tithe my time. Oh, see your knees, you very care, Kimai. You tithe your time. So I, I'm not going to give. The only time that your tithe truly makes a dent in the, in the kingdom of the enemy is when you're consistent in giving. When all hell breaks loose in your home and you say, man, God first in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 